Tao. Hello, everyone. This is the Circuit Python weekly meeting for Monday, May fifteenth, twenty twenty-three. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things Circuit Python. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on Circuit Python. You might ask, what is Circuit Python? It's a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to get an invite from adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel on the Adafruit Discord server. Typically, this meeting happens on Mondays at U.S. 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. Um, in the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role. So I mentioned the notes document. Uh, there is a Google Doc. Uh, which we use to accompany the meeting and recording. Um, that's available in the um, pinned messages in CircuitPython Dev. Let me just pop that up to show you. And then, uh, when so before the meeting, if you can add notes to that, that would be great. And then we'll read that, or you can read it. Um, and the final notes document uh, gets timestamps included to go along with the video so you can use the document to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 45 minutes, maybe up to an hour sometimes. After each meeting, we post the link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel and pin it, as I showed you. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document for us to read during the meeting. Uh, this meeting is held in five parts. I'll explain each part when I get to them. Um, the first is community news. The second is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. The third is hug reports. The fourth is status updates. And the fifth part, which may be empty, is in the weeds, where we might have some longer discussions. So with that, uh, we'll get started with community news. And let me silence my phone because it just beeped. Okie dokie. And get my timestamp working. OK. So these um, community news is available um, from the, uh, circuit, the weekly, circuit, weekly Python for Microtenders newsletter, which I'll tell you about later. So this, this news is uh, called from that. So uh, as of last week, there are now over 400 CircuitPython compatible microcontroller boards. Um, which is amazing. Um, those are listed on circuitpython.org. Um, there was a large addition this past week. They include boards from many manufacturers. Um, there, there are boards from the community, some companies that are not Adafruit, and entire new businesses and makers using and shipping boards with CircuitPython. Supported chips include chips from Espressif, Microchip SAMD line, uh, Nordic Semiconductor, NXP, um, RP2040 from Raspberry Pi, uh, ST chips from ST, uh, um, the ST company, IMX from NXP, uh, and more. Okay, so NXP uh, makes the uh, IMX chips. Um, the growth of CircuitPython compatible boards since 2017, there's a chart of that. It's interesting that it's been less than a year since 300 boards, which is about two boards per week, which is fabulous growth. And I'll just note that um, we add Adafruit boards, boards that are made by Adafruit, or boards that, or other manufacturers' boards that Adafruit sells. Um, but um, if you would like to add a board, uh, we have a whole guide on that about how to uh, add a board. You can find it in the Learn Guides, and we welcome uh, community contributions either from the makers of the board or from a community member who wants to add a board that whose manufacturer is not um, working on adding the board. Okay, uh, next up, 
Hackaday Supercon 2023 is on. Uh, Hackaday Supercon is, is um, going to run in 2023 and will take place November 3rd to 5th in Pasadena, California in the U.S. Uh, the conference organizers would like to hear your proposals for talks and workshops. There's a call for speakers in the notes stuck, and there's a blog entry about it. Read all about it. Okay, uh, another interesting thing that came up. Um, uh, Freak WAN, which is a LoRa-based open WAN network. Um, there's something in the notes doc about it. Uh, Free, Freak WAN is an effort to create a LoRa-based open WAN network completely independent from the internet and the cellular phone network. It is coded in MicroPython with an XS1276 LoRa chip driver. It is possible to send encrypted messages that will reach only other users with a matching symmetric key. Frequent also, also implements its own very small lossless compressed one-bit images. I don't know what a one-bit image is. <laughs> it's proof of a concept that can set small media types over LoRa. Um, yeah, I have a lot of one-bit images when I uh, eat crackers and get crumbs at my desk. Okay. Uh, next up, um, using MicroPython to get started with AWS IoT Core. Um, let me clean up a couple things from this. Uh, you can now use MicroPython to get started with AWS IoT Core with a recent guide by Amazon. Prototype your project to quickly test a full IoT solution. MicroPython makes it easy to connect the device to AWS IoT Core and route messages to other AWS services. So this is very interesting to use MicroPython, and maybe somebody's also interested in taking a look at this and see if it could be adapted for CircuitPython or whether we already have support in the guide. I do not remember. I think we may have something about that. Okay. So all these news items came from the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter, also known as the Python or Microcontrollers Newsletter. There are complete archives in adafruitdaily.com. And this newsletter comes out weekly. It highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. You can contribute news uh, to this newsletter. You can uh, submit a pull request to GitHub. There's a link to the GitHub where the draft, uh, which is handled on GitHub, in the um, notes doc. You can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter and probably on Mastodon also, and you can email cpnews at adafruit.com. Uh, any of those ways are great to get news for us. We don't really care what you choose. All right, let's move on to the next section, which is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Um, so, uh, we're going to go through a quantitative overview of the entire project. It will give us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our qualitative status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core libraries in Blinka. So first of all, um, overall, um, in the past week, there were 60 pull requests merged by 25 authors. Some people that I uh, don't have recognized uh, who might be new or um, who have contributed uh, in the past, Peter I5 or L5, not sure, 100 Visions Guy, Stefan, Stefan Fulus, C. Guardia, Tyeth, Virtual Radish, Muddy Knight 100, Furbrain, Bojan Pototnik, um, Kangos Gal, and Pedro 16. Sorry if I've uh, mispronounced your GitHub usernames, but these are all people I don't recognize. They may have been there before, but I'd like to recognize any new contributors. Thank you very much. So I said 25 authors. There were 12 reviewers, and there were 42 closed issues by 11 people and 22 opened by 20 people. So that's really great. We've got a lot of closed issues here. So next up, uh, we'll talk about the CircuitPython core. And Scott, are you available to read about the core? If not, I can hop in. Uh, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, I think Scott Scott's not muted, but maybe have moving microphone trouble. Okay. All right. So uh, this next section pertains to the core of CircuitPython, which is the part written in C that uh, makes the stuff go. And over the last week, we had 19 pull requests merged from 12 authors and four reviewers. 
So thank you to all of those folks. Um, that leaves us with 20 open pull requests, ranging in range from 1 to 453 days old, although those oldest couple are in draft status. And uh, if you do have an open pull request, like I do, uh, we encourage you to go back, check in. If there's something waiting for your action, to go ahead and do that. And if you need any help um, finishing that pull request, please feel free to ping us. We'd love to help and get some of those older pull requests closed out. On to issues. We were slightly down with 13 closed issues by six people and nine new issues, excuse me, 10 new issues opened by nine people. So that's net minus three. Uh, I won't bother telling you the total number of open issues because it is a big number. Instead, I'll talk to you about milestones. Uh, Adafruit manages the Adafruit people's time by assigning issues to milestones. And so for the 810 release, which will be our upcoming stable release, there are three open issues we'd like to solve. For the 8xx series, we've got 28 open issues. Those uh, are bug fixes or uh, improvements that we deem compatible enough to go into a minor version. And then for the next major version, 900, we've identified 29 things that we'd like to do. Uh, typically those are breaking changes. And uh, we'll be mentioning some of those a little further down because we're um, getting pretty close to releasing 810 final. And subsequent to that, we will uh, make the main branch be for version 9 development. Anyway, other milestones, we have uh, 543 uh, long-term issues. And those are issues that aren't prioritized for Adafruit folk to work on right now. But we always welcome people in the community. If you have an itch there that you want to scratch, if you want to learn to contribute to the core, uh, you can take a look at those long-term issues. They aren't all intractably difficult. It's just uh, that they aren't prioritized for Adafruit folk to work on. And uh, we've got five issues not assigned a milestone. And so that may indicate that uh, the core developers need to get together and decide if there are some of those to put on our version number milestones or whether to put those on the long-term milestone. And that wraps things up for the core. Back to you, Dan. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Okay, next up is uh, State of the Libraries. And uh, Katni, could you read that? Absolutely. So uh, this uh, section applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore as well as the community bundle and a few extras such as our cookie cutter. And across all of those repositories, we had 37 pull requests merged from 13 different authors and 10 reviewers. Um, part of the um, number of PRs that we merged this week uh, is related to we updated uh, the version of Pylint across all of the libraries so that it works with three, Python 3.11. Um, so there's a patch that does most of that uh, automatically, but there's always a few that slip through, and so that increased the number. Um, and the cookie cutter PRs are usually, uh, we have to update the cookie cutter, so all future libraries um, also have the update. And that leaves us with 67 open pull requests, which is about where we were last week. So I would say that most of um, most of what's in this list was related to um, to the update. We had 27 issues closed by five people and 12 opened by 11 people, leaving 604 open issues. 51 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open PRs. Take a look at the code. If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, just leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, and once you're comfortable with that, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. Uh, if you're interested in contributing code or documentation or bug fixes, etc., check out the list of open issues. They are... Uh, all available by library. Um, you can search by label if you're new to everything. Good first issue is a great place to start. And don't let the process intimidate you. We have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, as well as the fact that we're always available on Discord to help you. So we want to make sure you can contribute in a way that works for you. Uh, so library PyPI weekly download stats. Uh, total library PyPI downloads over 311 uh, libraries was 119,313. And uh, there is a list of the top 10, um, top 10 library downloads um, that I won't read off, but I will say all of them are over a thousand this week, which is not um, 
not typically the case. So there's been a lot of uh, activity. Um, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we have uh, three new libraries, uh, CircuitPython AXP192, CircuitPython BMP581, and CircuitPython STTS22H. And all three of these are community bundle libraries. And that's where we are with the libraries. All right, thank you, Katni. All right, uh, next up is the state of Blinka. And uh, Melissa, if you're available for that, go ahead. Yep, I'm here. Um, this week we have uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this week we had four pull requests merged by three authors and three reviewers. Uh, there are current we're down to two open pull requests now um, for amongst all the repos repositories that are Blinka related. There were two closed issues by one person and zero open by zero people, leaving a net of 96 open issues. There were 15,603 PyPI downloads in the last week, uh, 9,528 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are now up to 120 boards, Just and a lot of that's due to community members uh, contributing boards. And that's where we're at. All right, thank you, Melissa. Yeah, I remember when it was 100 boards, so 120 is fantastic. Okay. Yeah, that, it was like 101 just like a couple weeks ago, too. Well, that's great. All right. Okay, next up is Hug Reports. Uh, so Hug Reports is not bug reports, it's Hug Reports. It's a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you've, uh, no if you've noted in the notes that you're text only or you're not in the meeting, I'll just read your notes when I get to them in the list. So we'll start with uh, me. Um, so I'd like to thank Jeff Epler for continuing to work on Synth.io, which is making getting a lot of people very excited. And there are all kinds of already great demos uh, based on the capabilities that he's adding to Synth.io. Uh, we, we're looking at really like a wonderful um, uh, basis for using CircuitPython to do um, audio synth and music synthesis. OK. Next, um, thanks to T. Hess, who's continuing to contribute PRs and looking at bugs that are associated with various network-related issues. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, it's Ted Hess. And thanks to Scott for suggesting last week that, by the way, we look like we were about ready for an 8.1.0 release, which I hadn't seen the light at the end of the tunnel. And now I see it. And I really appreciate that. OK, next up is C. Grover. I'll read theirs. Uh, thanks to Jepler and the the team of testers for Synth.io. I was blown away when the foundational building blocks emerged and was utterly amazed when I heard polyphony, envelopes, and effects. Uh, next up is DJ Devon. Go ahead. Thank you. I have a hug for Tyeth for helping with an algorithm. Um, he entered, well, I wrote the algorithm, and he entered the, uh, the script into chat GTP. Uh, GPT, which spit out a 99% correct answer. The only thing it got wrong was trying to import numpy, NumPy instead of ULab NumPy. And I no longer see chat GT, GPT as an evil overlord, but as a relatively helpful tool. Uh, a thanks to Foamy Guy and Nerdoc for an interesting conversation about REST APIs, what they are, what they do, etc. Um, and a hug to Lady Ada and PT for dealing with Facebook incorrectly tagging show and tell as hate speech this week. And a group hug for everyone who doesn't engage in hate speech, which is everyone. All right. Thank you, uh, DJ Devin. I, I have some like brief kibitzing about ChatGPT. So, yes, you can use ChatGPT, but be extremely careful. It can be very confident and still be completely wrong. And um, it'd be interesting to see a more specialized, like you can make your own chat GPT models. It would be interesting to see if we just fed the learn guides, the, only the learn guides into uh, something, into a chat, uh, uh, made, a, made a language model with, you know, selected content. We might get fewer mistakes, yeah. for instance. Oh, I took it, I took it with a grain of salt and was yeah. able to like kind of take what it spit out and modify it and actually use it. And it, it all it does work right so that was pretty great cool. and you just have to say like just because it's 
it says it's right doesn't mean it's right and every, everybody use it with that in that way yeah it's 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 hard to describe but you have to like be prepared to modify whatever it gives you right exactly okay all right next up is foamy guy all right. Uh, thanks, Dan. Um, hard reports for me this week. Thank you to uh, Bill88T and Anecdata, who both uh, helped me troubleshoot some issues I was seeing uh, this morning with Wi-Fi, uh, including testing it out on their own on debug builds to try to confirm whether or not they were seeing the same thing. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, it's outside of our community, but a, a hard report for me goes out to Net Ninja on YouTube. Uh, I've been following their uh, Vue.js tutorial, uh, basic Vue.js tutorial on YouTube, and I've found it to be a nice uh, resource, and they actually have loads of other tutorials as well, uh, although this is the first uh, time that I've found them, but it's great content. Uh, and then uh, Hug Report, thanks to Maker Melissa for uh, a point or two confirm the behavior around the uh, periods on the 14 by 4 segment. Uh, display it treats those a little bit specially, um, and I need to go back and test that again with some of the changes I submitted, uh, and that's what I have for this week. Thanks. All right, thank you. All right, next up is uh, Jeffler. Oh, I have to find my unmute button. Um, hello. So I have a hug for you, Dan, for doing so much to bring eight one zero to stable, and for offering to do one of the upcoming Micro Python merges once we've. Uh, started working on version 9. A big thanks to Toddbot for making some demos showcasing Synth.io. I know those were getting some play on uh, Mastodon and on Hacker News, so bringing uh, people, uh, teaching people about what's coming up and hopefully getting them excited as well. And uh, finally, to JP, Toddbot again, uh, Mark, for feedback on the next direction for Synth.io, which I will talk about a little bit later when we get to status updates. And that's what I got. All right, thank you. And next up is Katty. Hello. So first up, uh, thanks to Tectric for updating Pylint and Black across all the libraries and fixing up the ones that had issues with the new versions. Um, hug report to Foamy Guy for looking into an issue with one of our projects on, or with all of our projects on Read the Docs. Uh, to Jeff for a ton of help with my current project code, to uh, you, Dan, for going through it to make sure I didn't leave any test prints in there and questioning my logic as well, um, to Foamy Guy for talking through a very specific CircuitPython feature and whether it would work on a very silly project idea. Um, spoiler alert, it, it does, so silly project may be happening. Um, to Naradoc for more help with my code, to Bill88T for a bunch of help with a Wi-Fi issue in my code, and uh, to Scott for adding the inky frame to the CircuitPython core, and a group hug. All right, thanks a lot. Um, and then, uh, Melissa, if you're available, go ahead. I just had a group hug. All right, thank you. OK, next uh, is Mark, um, known as Gambler21, who's not uh, here, so I'll read theirs. Thanks to Toddbot for answering some synth questions about a couple of YouTube videos he made, and thanks to Jeffler for all the synth work. The depth of what I can do is mind-blowing. So is the math behind it. Okay, uh, next is Carter, who's text-only. Uh, thanks to Tetrick and Katney for a heads up on uh, continuous CI, that is continuous integration, uh, deprecation needing attention in library, Arduino library repos. And thanks to Eva for updating all the repos for the above. So yes, we, there's a lot of maintenance that goes on in the libraries having to do with just preventing bit rot or, or compensating for bit rot in the library uh, CI stuff. Uh, and next up is Scott. All right, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Sweet. Somehow my setting got changed. Um, Okay, so for Hugger Boards, just a quick one for Joshua from Tiny Vision AI, who was cheering me on for uh, adding support for the Pico Ice to Circuit Python. It's a board with a RP2040 connected up to an Ice40 uh, up 5K, which is a, a well supported uh, FPGA on an open source world, which is cool. So Joshua has been a help with that, and they're continuing to help me with it. So thanks to them. Great, thank you. And then finally, uh, I'll read Tetrix. Uh, he's out right now. 
Thanks to Dan H., Jose David, uh, uh, Katni and Foamy Guy for PR reviews last week for helping with re recent passage pa patches. Yes, Tetrix submitted like a bazillion uh, uh, updates, housekeeping updates to the libraries, and a bunch of us uh, reviewed those and approved them. And a group hug, Tetrix says. Okay, next up we've got status updates. Uh, uh, so what is status updates? Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start again, it's as we did before, and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, you can take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is an, also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. So I will get started. Um, so I was uh, I came back from a, a trip uh, last Tuesday, so I've only been working since Wednesday or so, and can't just catching up on things. But um, late last week, I've been finishing off the last uh, as many final issues as I could for 810. Um, I fixed a bunch of rather specific bugs uh, that people had submitted that were some were old and some were new. Um, so we're down to uh, three issues. Two of those are kind of related, and we might push those forward to 8xx because that issue, it has to do with network crashes, and we're still debugging it, and it's not a regression. It's a regression from 7, but not from 8.0, unfortunately. So we might just push that forward. And I did a lot of reviews, and as I mentioned, I did a bunch of reviews of the housekeeping library housekeeping uh, pull requests. All right, uh, next up is C. Grover. Um, been running a three ring PCB design and build circus lately and haven't been coding much. Nine more boards to assemble, followed by two new designs to send to Osh Park. After that, we'll put all the boards back into the clown car, take down the tent, and move on to wrapping up some circuit Python coding projects and associated guides. All right, great. Next up is DJ Devon. Uh, this week, I wrote a basic algorithm for temperature bias adjusting the BME280 sensor module. This is just the, the Adafruit module, not the one that's like on the boards or like the TFT boards. Um, but it was all Tyeth and ChatGPT who slimmed it down to a linear algorithm into like 10 lines of code. Um, I've calibrated the bias against mercury thermometers, and the bias adjustment now makes the BME 280 super precise to within a tenth of a degree, no matter what the PCB temperature or the module PCB temperature is. It's almost as accurate as a mercury thermometer. The algorithm only needs to go down to 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Below that, the PCB is sufficiently cooled and doesn't affect the reading. The algorithm is a work in progress. The more data points in the curve that I can feed it, uh, the more accurate it becomes. By default, the BME 280 is about 96% accurate, which still means there's an eight degree deviation when over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of you up north might not reach that. In Florida, that's a yearly, like that's, it's just a matter of time. Uh, my algorithm brings the accuracy up to 99.1%, and I'm shooting for 99.9% .9 this summer. And since I'm in Florida, I'm in a good position to track these data points needed above 110 uh, Fahrenheit. I uh, went on show and tell this week with a Feather DVI weather station, which I plan on using during a live stream or to live stream during hurricanes until I lose Wi-Fi or power. Uh, I tested my first live stream. Um, showing me organizing the GUI elements, which is kind of cool if you want to watch that. You can actually see Blinka like reloading in the background over the on-screen display stuff. Um, I have a new project on the horizon using an Itsy Bitsy NRF52840 with Seagrover's Itsy Bitsy adapter and Adafruit Connect mobile app to control an LED candle. Uh, through different colors. I thought about using WLED at first, but after seeing all the different hoops you have to jump through, I just decided to go with CircuitPython and the, uh, the NRI-52. So that's what I'm going to be doing this week, and that's all I got. All right, thanks for that extensive update. All right, next up is Foamy Guy. All right, um, 
I, uh, over the past week or so, uh, validated a change that we put into the core a little while back that fixed some issues in the uh, RTD docs pages uh, where they don't, like some of the interactive elements don't work, like search and the pop-up for the versions. Um, so I tested that, fixed the same one we did in the core out on the library to confirm that would fix over there as well, and then uh, passed that over to... Uh, tech trick to get it ready to go out with a patch to the rest of the libraries um, and it was successful so that's in motion now um, I over this past weekend uh, I created an HTTP API for initializing and controlling RGB LEDs um, in particular it supports NeoPixels and dot stars right now and you can basically connect to it with get and post requests and just send it uh, JSON data to tell it like which pins you want to initialize and how many pixels and things like that. Um, and currently it has control to set all the pixels individually or use the fill uh, functionality as well as like all the other properties like brightness and auto write and things like that. Um, in the future, I'd like to add support for some of the existing LED animations to it. So you can, uh, instead of setting everything to a solid color or something, you'll be able to tell it to start up, you know, the fade animation or one of the other ones. Um, I uh, finally was uh, dragged my feet for a, a week or so on the, no the non-blocking marquee uh, scrolling for the HT16K33, but I did finally get that uh, submitted, um, although I do have some more testing uh, to carry out. Um, I, this morning, set up a Feather S2 TFT running uh, an HTTP server to try to catch a hard fault that I was thinking was related to running the HTTP server. Um, and actually, late breaking news on that, about five or six minutes ago, it did finally hard fault with the debugger running, so I actually have the stack trace from that now. I just got to debug it and post it back up in the issue later. Uh, and the last thing that I am up to, which is outside the CircuitPython world, uh, sort of, is I'm trying to learn the basics of Vue.js. Um, however, the reason, the motivation for trying to learn it is to be able to tinker with the EDU blocks project, which does kind of tie it back to CircuitPython a bit. Uh, but that's what I have got going on. Thanks. All right. Thanks very much. All right. Next up is Jeff. Hello. So uh, the main thing over the last week was improvements to SynthIO and the pull request, I think that was merged late last week, adds tremolo, vibrato, frequency sweep, and rig modulation. And we've been having a little discussion in a thread here alongside CircuitPython Dev. Anybody's welcome to join us and have opinions. Um, but adding LFO objects that can be connected in some kind of topology uh, is a sensible next step. I started the implementation this morning, and it's close to the point where I can try to hook it up in a way that it actually replaces the original tremolo and vibrato controls with uh, controllable LFOs. And then JP and Toddbot and anybody else who cares to can kick the tires on that. I'm hoping that I'll get a PR in tomorrow. Um, I haven't tested this on hardware yet. It's just a bunch of C code, runs in a testing environment, but uh, it seems to be in pretty good shape when I started my meetings this morning. And I also made a lot of progress on my Xerox 820 CPM machine, and I'm working on a passive adapter board for a PC 34-pin floppy connector to the 39-pin connector on the Xerox drive box. That would hypothetically let uh, the Adafruit floppy feather wing interact with the contents of these 8-inch uh, floppies. And I did put a blog post up about the machine. I'll uh, drop a link to that, a photo. And then I also asked ChatGPT what is under the yellow sticker on the upcoming Arduino. And I think it came up with some great ideas. So I'm just going to share those with you as well. So another ChatGPT item. And that's what I got. All right. Thank you. All right. Next up is Katni. Hello. So last week, I uh, finally figured out that the issue with my Canary Nightlight code is that there's some problem with it and ESP32-S2, but that it works flawlessly on ESP32-S3. So the project now uses the S3 cutie pie. Related, I should probably still try my code on a different ESP32-S2 to make sure I don't have a bad board. That said, if it is still present, someone should probably look into why it fails so spectacularly, and that person will not be me, though I'm happy to test it. Um... So finally wrapped up the Canary Nightlight code, which was so satisfying. Um, there is now a STEM and QT connector on one of our feather wings, but it turns out there was never a guide 
in the first place. So we're writing the guide instead of just doing a STEM QT update. So I started that guide and then um, started uh, the guide for the Canary Nightlight. Um, I updated two guides. Uh, one is the M7. There's specific PWM audio capable pins and that's in there. And then the RGB matrix shield, um, it had a new revision. So that's been fixed as well. So for this week, in no particular order, uh, do as much of the Featherwing guide as I can without the hardware. Should be here tomorrow. Um, finish up my part in the Canary Nightlight guide so that I'm not blocking uh, Noah when he's ready to finish it. Uh, I'm going to be doing the new Chalk Neo Key Breakout guide. Um, miscellaneous, a couple of guide updates, some guide fixes, and there's three more of those in my to-do list here. Um, and as time permits, I do have some project, uh, project stuff I want to eventually um, work on and or uh, document, um, write up some guides there, but there's been a lot of other priorities. So those are probably going to remain background stuff. And in other news, uh, my brand new laptop started its first day of work this morning. I decided to do a fresh install, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, previous laptop is still ready to rescue things if needed, but I'm super excited. That's what I've got. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Next up is maker Melissa. Uh, hello. Let's see here. Um, my, I can't read the document. It's like the text is kind of weird. I need to, can you come back to me? I'm going to reload. Sure. No problem. All right. Uh, Scott, can you go ahead? Yeah, totally. Um, so I have two libraries that I need to wrap up. Um, one is the JSON stream which I'm using for this e-ink or e-paper uh, weather display. Uh, JSON stream allows you to process JSON as it comes in or as, as it streams in. So it reduces the amount of memory you need to use. It's not super fast, but um, it is helpful for memory. Um, and then also prompts toolkit, which I'm using for the circuit pirate and note that the circuit pirate will is going to be renamed. Uh, we'll look at circuit pirate uh, this week, I'm going to look into adding Circuit Pirate support for ICE 40 image loading and probably SWD as well. So, this might be the chance for uh, us to be able to use Circuit Python as an SWD probe. Um, and uh, Lamore wants to use it just to like be able to load images straight from Circuit Python. Um, I also want to circle back to USB host on the IMX uh, and do a bit of testing because I saw that TAC was working on it. So I want to follow along with that and kind of like uh, support him. Uh, I, If I have a chance, I'll circle back to the continuing IMX testing. And I have this learn guide about porting that I need to get back to. Uh, lastly, I made a PR for the Inky Frame 5.7. It's merged in. And I'm using it here, which is nice. And I also made a prototype branch for the Pico ICE board, which is an RP2040 uh, combined with an ICE 45K, which is a, an FPGA. Um, and I, I got one of those boards, and so I made the board def for that. So that'll be cool. And that's my update. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, Melissa, are you all set? Yes, it's looking correct now. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, last week, I finished adding a bunch of Blinka boards to CircuitPython.org, putting set 120 boards. I finished updating the code for my collaboration project with Aaron. Uh, I updated platform detect, so it now decodes the Raspberry Pi revision code and intelligently determines the appropriate board. This will make it uh, much less work to manage every time Raspberry Pi updates a board. Um, also makes adding new boards easier. I fixed some issues with the Raspberry Pi installer scripts, but the PRs are still open. And I fixed the links for the RP2040 Feather Think Inc. on circuitpython.org. I'm not sure if that's been merged or not yet. And I worked on a... So this week I'm going to work on the Cloud Project Guide. And um, there's going to be... And I'll work on some more issues, GitHub issues, and GitHub actions improvements for like the Blinka repo and stuff. And that's it. All right, thank you. Okay, and finally, um, tech tricks out. I'll read theirs. Um, last week, updated PyLint and other pinned versions of pre-commit tools across the libraries. 
fixed an issue with the cookie cutter where community bundles would be missing a new line. Submitted a PR to the core to build the stubs package in an updated more recent method. Submitting a patch for review that will finish updating pilot for a deprecation warning as well as fix an issue with jQuery that Foamy Guy implemented. And this week, uh, Tectric will continue to look through a backlog of issues to complete and look into making some issues to the Learn Guide repo to speed up the CI checks. All right, well, that's it um, for status updates. We don't have any in the weeds unless anybody has anything they'd like to bring up. So I will um, wrap up, take a time stamp. Um, so just to uh, recapitulate, this has been the Circuit Python Weekly for Monday, May 15th, 2023. Thank you everyone who participated, whether in person or by entering your notes. Remember that if you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python and those that work of us that work on Circuit Python, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. Uh, the video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit in a little while, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, it will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which will be coming out tomorrow. Visit adafruitdaily to subscribe. The next meeting um, next week, no, not next week, never mind. Next week is at a regular time. The next meeting will be held Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, the meeting in two weeks is delayed because of a um, U.S. holiday, but we'll talk about that next week. Um, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the at sign circuit pythonistas role on Discord. So we hope to see you all next week. Thanks for your contributions this week. Thank you, everybody, for attending or contributing. Okay. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. I will stop recording.